do we send forth? What do we say when we send forth loved ones? If they're toddlers going off to little explorers, we might say, don't throw sand, take turns, listen to your teacher. If they're six-year-olds going off to first grade, we might say, raise your hand, don't forget your lunch money, be sure you get on the right bus. And if they're eighth graders graduating to high school, we might say, find a good group, don't bully, and Forrest's favorite, use your head. Our high school graduates two Sundays ago heard their parents say, we love you and trust you. We think and we hope we've prepared you for the challenges of college that lie ahead. And if we wave to a loved one boarding the Titanic, little would we know how much they would need our prayers. So what do these sending forth farewells have to do with John 17? Jesus prays for his disciples and for himself in the last prayer that the disciples will actually hear. It's Jesus' exit interview or perhaps his last will and testament. It's his last opportunity to remind disciples of all that he's taught his Christ followers. For Jesus knows the threats and the challenges lying in wait for all of us as we go forth into the world. Threats and challenges that tempt us from the ways of Christ. Don't we too worry and that we and our loved ones will give in to the temptations all around them? What will be their choices? Like Jesus, our words and our worries become more urgent as we prepare to say goodbye. So Jesus prays that God will protect and strengthen the disciples, which includes us. I think of our confirmands especially today. You all have your parents, your Sunday school teachers, your mentors, who've taught and role modeled the words of Jesus to you. But just as important has been their relationship to each of you concretely in the here and now, showing forth Jesus' love by teaching you, by loving you, praying for you, and trusting you. Particularly this year, Confirmands, Corey and Cheryl and Kate and I have walked alongside you in your journey. Your journey to learn about God and Jesus and the Holy Spirit and the church and the sacraments so that you can write what you believe about your faith. Your faith statements or your will and testament about what you believe at this point in time in your faith journey. And what you believe about Jesus will influence the choices that you make as we send you forth into the world with a bit more freedom and a whole lot of trust in you. And what you believe will change over time. What does it mean for all of us to be in the world, but not of the world, 
as Jesus says in verses 15 and 16 of our scripture today. Mitch Todd, former pastor of University Methodist Church here in Topeka, has a wonderful image of how we're to be in the world, but not of the world. And his image is the Titanic. Using his words from his weekly devotion this week, he writes, Anxious Christians sometimes describe our current efforts as rearranging the deck chairs on the Titanic. He writes that our efforts to fix the problems of our sinking church are futile. The Titanic, he writes, he says, I would like to suggest a different way for us to look at our current situation. What if sin is the Titanic? At first glance, that image might not be particularly comforting either. But what if our human condition has put us all at peril from day one. He writes, I seem to remember reading something about that in a good book somewhere. Malice, materialism, selfishness, haves and have nots, fear, deceitfulness. Christians today don't necessarily agree on what items go on that list. But surely we can agree that sinful ways of the world are a constant threat to drag us down. Perhaps sin then, or perhaps evil then, is the iceberg. This refers to our being in the world. If sin is the Titanic, what does that make us? Mike, I mean, um, Mitch suggests that the role of the church is to be the lifeboats. Picture the lifeboats on the Titanic. They were along for the same ride affected by the same iceberg. But in response to this, this perilous time that has affected us all, we, compromands, members, friends of Trinity, are uniquely poised to offer something. Life. Life. You may recall that there were issues with the lifeboats on the Titanic. There weren't enough for everybody, and many were launched half full. Lifeboats weren't deployed properly, and people were left behind. That too has happened in our churches. So if this analogy holds true, Mitch and I see the church facing two dilemmas if we're to function as we were created. So confirmands, as you go for forth on your journey, and all members and friends of Trinity, number one, we have to respond to the same icebergs that the whole world struggles with. We are susceptible to the same sinfulness, the same selfishness, and the same fears that everybody faces. And number two, we have to make sure that our churches are ship-shaped, safe places in a crazy world, reaching out with love, and helping people move to a new way of living. We must be vigilantly equipped and deployed, sent forth. 
named and claimed by God through Jesus, protected and strengthened by God when faced with these two ways, the ways of the wicked sinners and scoffers, as outlined in Psalm 1, or the way of the Lord like trees planted by streams of water and watched over by the Lord and always sustained and supported as we're standing in the need of prayer. Amen.